as we um, are looking at uh, the things of Scripture again, we're looking in Galatians chapter 2 uh, this morning, um, and looking at what it means to be true. Uh, and these things have brought to mind a uh, story I heard uh, not too long back of a uh, police officer uh, that uh, pulled alongside a uh, a car and uh, stopped the car because of something that he saw and asked for the driver for the license and registration. And uh, the driver asked, what's wrong, officer? And um, I said, he said, I didn't go through the red lights. I didn't uh, speed. What, what, what's the issue? And the officer said, no, no, you weren't. Uh, but I saw you waving your fist as you swerved around the lady uh, driving in the left lane. And I further observed your flush and angry face as you shouted uh, at the driver of the Hummer who cut you off in traffic. And how you pounded on your steering wheel when the traffic came to a stop near the bridge. And he said, I'm sorry, was that a crime? And he says, no, but when I saw the uh, Jesus loves you and so do I bumper sticker under the car, I figured the car had to be stolen. <laughs> and stuff. Do we represent ourselves in true ways of being servants of Christ? Now, somebody that says, I love Jesus, and he loves you too, and so do I. What do we represent ourselves to be? And that's what Paul is talking about in this portion of Galatians, uh, as we, we look at it as the representation of who we are and what we believe. In the first portion of uh, chapter 2 of Galatians, uh, Paul is talking about how he uh, had uh, gone back to Jerusalem uh, with Barnabas and Titus and uh, came there and talked to the, uh, the leaders in the, in the church, uh, which were Peter and James, and uh, that they said, hey, we uh, agree with what you're teaching, that you're following what uh, God has told us. And there's nothing else that you need to do other than keep doing this and remember the Lord. And he said, yeah, I'm good. And then in this second portion of Galatians, beginning at verse 11, we see where uh, they are in a different city and Peter comes to visit. So I want us to pick up there in uh, verse 11 in chapter 2 of Galatians and, and read that together. It says, but well, when Peter came to Antioch, had to oppose him publicly, speaking strongly against what he was doing, for it was very wrong. When he first arrived, he ate with the Gentile Christians who don't bother with circumcision. But afterward, when some Jewish friends of James came, Peter wouldn't eat with the Gentiles anymore because he was afraid of what these legalists would say. Then the other Jewish Christians followed Peter's hypocrisy. And even Barnabas was influenced to join them in their hypocrisy. When I saw that they were not following the truth of the good news, I said to Peter, in front of all the others, since you, a Jew like me, have discarded the Jewish laws and are living like a Gentile, why are you trying to make these Gentiles obey the Jewish laws you abandoned? You and I are Jews by birth, not sinners like the Gentiles. And yet, we... Jewish Christians know that we become right with God, not by doing what the law commands, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we have believed in Christ Jesus, that we might be accepted by God because of our faith in Christ, not because of what we have, that we have obeyed the law, for no one will ever be saved by obeying the law. But what if we seek to make to be made right with God through faith in Christ, and then find out that we are still sinners. Has Christ led us into sin? Of course not. Rather, I make myself guilty if I rebuild the old system I already tore down. Rather, I make my uh, rather I understand. Uh, for when I tried to keep the law, I realized I could never earn God's approval. So I died to the law so that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ. I myself no longer live, but Christ lives in me. So I live my life in this earthly body 
by trusting the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I'm not one of those who treats the grace of God as meaningless. For if we could have been saved by keeping the law, then there was no need for Christ to die. You know, as we read this, this passage, uh, we could easily say, well, you know, that, that's interesting. Uh, what they had to deal with in that time. Uh, and boy, am I glad that we aren't that way now. Uh, let's move on. This really isn't a uh, comfortable subject anyway. When we look into it, though, we see that this is not just about the cutting away the skin. Paul is dealing with some things that are principles for us today. We see there in verse 11. Who was it that Paul was addressing in this issue? It was Peter. Who was Peter? He was certainly a Christian, right? Yeah. He was not a non-believer. He was the leader of, of the church at that time. He was definitely a Christian. He's not talking about those things that uh, non-believers are dealing with. Those are even some things that they don't even worry about. But Peter was in a position of leadership. And what was Paul's action in this? It was to oppose. He said he opposed Peter to set oneself against. And Paul did it publicly. The New American Standard Bible the translation says it was face to face. This was not a gossip session that uh, he went to somebody else and said, Did you see what Peter did? Did you hear what he was doing? He wasn't even doing. And they were talking amongst each other about this. He said, Well, let me tell you, you know, I can't believe it. Uh, if, it's not a boy, I sure wouldn't do it that way type situation. Uh, it says he opposed him. And this is the same word as resist that is used in Ephesians 6.13, where it says, use every piece of God's armor to resist the enemy in the time of evil, so that after the battle, we will still be standing firm. And also in James 4.7, where it says, so humble yourselves before God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. This is an active opposition. This is not just, well, I hope I'm dodging this. I, I want to get out of the way of this so it doesn't affect me. Let it hit somebody else. He said, I'm going to resist. I'm going to stand for this. I'm going to do something about it. I'm not going to just let it go. Why was he so adamant about this thing that he saw? He says there in verse 11, for it was very wrong. There was a call as to whether something was right or something was wrong. To be able to judge those things and say, this is something right, or this is something wrong, and now we're going to do something about it. Is there ever a time when right is wrong? There was a, uh, a case in Los Angeles several years ago uh, between two men. Uh, first one was Mr. Wright. was his name. And it was a civil dispute that they went to court for. And they stood before the judge and uh, they uh, brought forth their case. They, uh, they talked about things, claimed about ownership of a patent that, uh, that one of them claimed was his and the other one claimed no, it's mine. And they attempted to get the judge to believe their side of the story. And the judge says, well, one of you must be wrong. And Mr. Wrong says, that's right, I'm wrong. And I'm right. And then Mr. Right interrupted. He's wrong, Your Honor. I'm right, and wrong is wrong. Uh, but through that process, uh, all the things that went on, the, uh, the judge, uh, Judge Yankovich, who was his name, after a long determination, determined that the, uh, the right-wrong dispute was coming to an end. And he said, paradoxically, though it may appear in this case, 
right is wrong, and wrong is right, and so I enter my judgment. <laughs> to be able to determine between right and wrong, Paul addresses this issue once again a little bit farther on in chapter 6, where he says, if anyone is caught in sin, we should talk to him, but not get caught up by ourselves, and not to think we are something when we are not. We are to see things for what they are. Sin or not. Wrong or wrong. What was it that Peter's action that he was talking about that was appeared so wrong to him? Verse 12 tells us he ate with the Gentiles at first, but after friends of James came, he changed or withdrew, one translation puts it, and says, and he would not eat with them. Why did he do that? Because he was afraid of what the legalists would say. This is one of the first times we see in Scripture about Peter Hodgson. About being influenced by somebody else because of what we think they will think. Instead of what we know to be right. To stand up because it's the right thing to do. Instead of what somebody else, I don't know what they'll think of me if I don't or if I do. What are we to fear? God or man? Proverbs 29 25 says, Fearing people is a dangerous trap, but to trust the Lord means safety. How do we show fear today? What is it that we do? Do we pray for your meals when we go? I don't know. Not a Christian. And, uh, yeah, we go ahead. Are you being affected by <coughs> peer pressure in ways that we don't even really realize? Just as Peter was being affected by those around him. Exodus 1 17 tells us, but because the midwives feared God, they refused to obey the king and allow the boys to live. Remember that situation? This was when Moses was born. And they had been told, this is what the law says, you will put to death every male child that's born. But here it says, these midwives feared God more than they feared even the king and what he had said to do, the Pharaoh. And, and, so, and they obeyed God instead. 1 Samuel 12, 24 tells us, be sure to fear the Lord and sincerely worship Him. Think of all the wonderful things He has done for you. To fear God instead of what we think other people will think of us or might do to us if we did or didn't do what God tells us to do. John 19.38 tells us, uh, Afterwards, Joseph of Arimathea, who had been a secret disciple of Jesus, as he feared the Jewish leaders, asked Pilate for permission to take Jesus' body away. When Pilate gave him permission, he came and took the body away. Remember how all those things took place and when uh, he came and talked to Jesus and said, what does all this mean? How can a man be born again? And he came at night away from others because he was afraid of what the others would say he, they saw him going and talking to this one that the Pharisees had said, he's not teaching the right thing. We shouldn't be listening to him. He's leading the people astray. Uh, and stuff to do. And it says he was in fear of the Jewish leaders. But he changed his mind. He said, I'm not going to fight. I'm going to take do these things. And he decided to do the right thing. What is the result of wrong action? Where does it take? Verse 13 in 2 Galatians, in Galatians 2 says, Others, or other Christians, join in doing the wrong because of Peter's example, which called hypocrisy, pretended to gather. 
they said, oh, yeah, well, let's just do this. It's, it's easier. And it says that even Barnabas joined in the hypocrisy. Who is watching you? The clues on what is right and wrong. You ever been in that situation where maybe you're in a group of people and you're wondering, okay, what do we do next? And, and you're waiting, oh, I see that person. Well, they're doing it that way. This is what I'll do. Or maybe you've been at a fancy dinner. That's where they've got more forks than you know what to do with, as well as knife and spoon, and there's something at the top of the plate as well. Go, well, which one do I use? What do I do? Oh, they're using that one. I'll do that. Then we tend to watch others to get our clue as to what we're doing. Others are watching you to get a clue as to what they should do. What are they watching? What are they seeing in you? The word hypocrite was first used to describe an actor, one who played a part that was not who he was. And that's what Paul was just saying that Peter was doing, was playing a part that he didn't really want to realize. He was doing something that he shouldn't be doing. James 3.17 says, But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy, and good fruits, unwavering, without hypocrisy. That we are who we say we are. Have a bumper sticker on your car that proclaims that you're a Christian. What do people see because of the way that you are? With that label that you're saying. First Timothy 1 5 says, But the goal of our instruction is love from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Sincere means the same all the way through. No matter what I'm doing, no matter who I'm with, no matter what the circumstances are, it's the same all the way through. What is my faith like? Sincere and genuine, without hypocrisy. Something that can be trusted to be the same. Verse 14 in Galatians 2 says, When they saw they were not following the truth. The New American Standard says, not straightforward. Live right and to act right. They were not following the truth of the good news. And he addressed it. And telling others to do what you do or not do. Do as I say, not as I do. You ever heard anybody say that? You ever told that? Just do as I say. <laughs> and, and stuff that gets there. So, how does this apply to us today as the church? Do I pose that which is wrong? Am I able to determine right and wrong? And do I oppose the wrong? Not just be out of its way and hope it doesn't affect me, but do I stand for what is right? Oppose the wrong. Do I know the difference between my way of doing things and going against God's way? There's things that we may do. The way we worship, songs we sing, uh, the things that we wear, all those things may be personal. And can I tell the difference between those things that are personal to us or that go against what God has for us? Am I willing to say what I believe God says is right? Position or your status doesn't matter. There in verse 6 of Galatians 2, it says Peter was the head. He was the, the head person. And Paul was willing to say, hey, hey, this is wrong. We need to stop and address this. He said, our position doesn't matter. Because that's a position among us, not a position in front of them. I've heard it said before, the ground is level. We are all equal in God's eyes. There is no hierarchy that says, oh, no, 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 because he's got a higher standard. He loves us all. The next thing we need to realize is that I need to get 
but we think we're face to face. No gossip. Gossip doesn't do anything except make things worse. It says he went to him and confronted him. What is it that we are afraid of doing? What will people think and say of me? Or what will God think of me about being with these? Should I go and speak to somebody? Or if I don't, what's God going to say about God hates you. How come you didn't stand up for the right? Who is watching? And what will others be doing and thinking? I want to follow the language. Even if I go along. When I was uh, in college, I had a, a class I worked at the, uh, the garage and we did repair on air conditioners and, and cars and, and stuff to do. And uh, the air conditioning class I was in was teaching us how to replace the seal on the shaft of the compressor pump. And uh, in looking at it, the instructor was saying, yeah, there's a, a right way and a wrong way to put the seal in. If you put it in wrong, it's not going to seal, it's going to leak, and you're going to have to do it over. And you have to be able to tell which is the right and way, right, which side is up, which side goes down. And he had it and showed it to us and says, this is the right side up, this is the wrong side that goes down, and, and went over it. And said, everybody got it? He says, yeah, we got it. He says, so then he Mixed it up in his hand. He said, hand it to the first person in the group. He says, okay, which side? Which side? And they said, oh, this side here. And the next person said the same thing. The next person said the same thing. The next person said the same thing. The next person said, I have to be the last in line. And I looked at it and said, you know, I, I think that's wrong. It should go this way. He said, really? Because the first person in line said, everybody else said, well, he must know what he's talking about. I'll just agree. We have to stand for what we know to be right. Not just because, yeah, they, they did it that way. Well, it must be okay for me to do that too. I need to live my life by what I know is right instead of just what somebody else may be doing or what they say. Is my life consistent? Is there no hypocrisy? expect others to do what I am not willing to do myself. If I'm not willing to go and confront somebody about what the issue was, do we tell say, you go to it. You talk to it. Hey, thank you. We find somebody else because we don't want to do it. I need to be willing to do that. Paul didn't look for somebody else and said, Say, they already just told me I was doing right. Now I'm going to confront. He said, No, I'm going to do those things. And also, am I willing to listen and accept that I have been the one in the wrong? So many times we get that ego built up and say, You know, I'm right. I'm not going to listen to you. Even though in the back of our minds we go, Oh, you know, I was wrong. But we don't want to admit it. We don't want to show our vulnerability. We don't want to admit those things that say, you know, you were wrong. And I, a big enough person to say, I was wrong. You were right about that. Thank you for pointing that out to me. I am going to listen to you. And this is what is implied that Peter did. That he came to his realization and said, you know, I, I was wrong about that. I can't stop you from it. Because there is nothing Shed on the cross that covers our sins to make us right with God. Where those that were saying, hey, you need to be circumcised first, were following the teaching of the way of the man. And the Jewish leaders were trying to get back and stuff to, to do. But he said, no, I was wrong in what I was doing. It is only because of faith in Jesus Christ that we are saved.
Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your word that guides us. Thank you for the realization that you are right and wrong. That there is sin. That there are things that are wrong. As well as things that we need to be doing right. Father, guide and direct us. Give us courage and boldness to stand for you. To To address the concerns and to admit when we are wrong. Father, we thank you for your love for us. And be with us as we are your church in this place that we can be seen as being true and faithful to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with us.